What is up guys? I'm Johnny Valentine with Gain Solar. I'm a licensed electrician and solar installer in Northeast Georgia. And in this video, I'm going to be going through the longevity and what a PV system looks like after 10, really 11 years, the system's been installed. And I just want to show you, this is on this ground mount, how long do these systems really last? Because we're starting to get some of that data now. How long do they last? What's still working? What's not? Instead of just looking at it and saying what, you know, crappy work it was, or being really critical, I'm just gonna go through and kind of show you how it's doing, what parts have failed, or what parts have gone bad, or what parts you know can be done differently. So we'll start off with the modules, and forgive me if the camera work is shaky. Uh, you're not here for the camera work though, you're here for the technical part. So uh, modules are still in plenty good shape. These are monocrystallines. These are 245 watt Sunevas, and uh, they actually look pretty clean, so. I don't think this guy cleaned them because he asked me if he should, but soiling is pretty minimal out here. And that is probably due to the fact that they're almost three feet off the ground. So you can see there's a lot more soiling up top. That would be worth cleaning. Uh, you could get to that really easily with a brush on a handle. So I'd probably clean that. So soiling on the modules, but all the modules are still working. Uh, the 245 watt Suniva modules, it's not, not this guy's fault necessarily because he couldn't have known he was trying to help out Georgia, but they're made by Suniva, which was in Norcross. They're now out of business. So the modules are no good anymore. Next thing we do is go around back to the aluminum and the steel. Uh, the steel looks really good. All right, so one of the things I'm wondering about is the post. All right, so looking at the posts, I just dug down here with my shovel and uh, looks like the posts are in really good shape. I'd say the galvanizing is totally holding up. This is a Schletter mount. It's installed in Georgia. And I don't know if it's driven posts or concrete, but I'm not seeing any concrete. So it kind of makes me think it might be driven. But this Schletter is installed in North Georgia. And, you know, we're not in a marine environment, but we do get a good bit of uh, moisture and humidity. And uh, it doesn't seem to be corroded right at the ground level, which, you know, everybody that I talk to says that's where they're gonna corrode. And uh, one guy in the industry said that these posts are gonna corrode and fall over on themselves. These are not C-channel. I don't know what you would call these. This is the old Schletter uh, post. Um, I guess the next mark against it is that although the aluminum and the galvanized, the posts are galvanized and the, uh, the rest of the rack is aluminum from here up, all this is holding up really good. Uh, other than being a little dirty, it totally seems solid. And looks really good um but schletter the manufacturer is no longer in business either so that's we got two out of the three manufacturers of the big ticket items on this array no longer around okay so this one the um i'm noticing there's some some galvanic corrosion happening on some of the bonding this is something i see common when they don't use a stainless steel bolt this is usually a tin plated copper. This is called a weeb. This is uh, this part is to bond everything together. There's actually a little stainless plate in between that. You can see the part of that stainless plate right there. And it's got teeth that break through the anodized coating of the aluminum. But the fastener that they used to attach it was not stainless like that fastener. So it's pretty rusty. It's still holding tight, but definitely would have done something different there use a stainless fastener on your weeb uh, probably didn't have none on the truck uh, copper looks good this is um thhn that's run outside should be bare ground but it's still holding up the insulation on the thhn is flaking off obviously that's why they don't want you to use thhn could have used bare ground on this just fine uh, to get out to get into the underground the guy used uh, liquid tight conduit this feels like just regular old PVC liquid tight that doesn't appear to have the metal inside uh, after 10 years looks dirty but it's still holding up so we'll give it a pass it's not coming off he strapped it really well this is the PVC I'm sure it's brittle it's just as brittle as my teeth but uh it's totally totally holding totally protected totally supported so that one's lasting if it was it's on the north side if it was on the south side might be a different story. Um, I'm not gonna touch these zip ties, guys, because they will explode. I know the zip ties will explode, but uh, they are still here. So 10 years later and the zip ties are still here. These look like 
pretty high high brake strength too they're they're not uh they're more than 80 pounds uh this guy had the uh he had the forethought or, or the the gumption i don't know what the right word is there but he had the he had the decency to use pv wire clips they were out back then i know i wasn't using them back then but he used pv wire clips and his wire management looks really good they've used usc wire this is usc2 this is not pv wire right before the transformless inverters all of them were pretty much wired in pv wire he even had uh did some silicone in there to keep any kind of insects from getting in and all the usc wire looks really good um I know you can, I'll try to get a shot of the uh, actual wire. So connectors are good on the modules. Here's the full name of this wire, 10 AWG XLP UL type RHH or RHW or USC2, 600 volt, 90 degree Celsius rating, oil resistant, sunlight resistant. So this is the PV, the, the wire we were using before PV wire came out. It was, it's USC2. You can still use it, but you can't use it on transformless inverters. So, even where he used his PVC, looks like he even did a little heat bend and jumpered it across. There's another example of galvanic corrosion, guys. Got a stainless bolt on a, or stainless nut on a non-stainless bolt. So you can see what's happening there. So other than, you know, a little bit of corrosion here and there, this array is holding up really well. And it gives me confidence in what we're doing because I feel like I'm installing better than this guy is, so. If it's lasting this long, I think a ground mount solar array is still the way to go. Even the uh, liquid type, the way it's supported, it's doing just fine. That's how he came out of the, came off the solar array and he went into liquid type. And that's what he brought down into his DC disconnects. The original reason I was called out here was because the customer had a ground fault, but the uh, ground fault fuse had blown on both inverters which leads me to believe that we had some type of a lightning event or something because once the ground fault fuse was replaced, I don't know if you guys can see that, but the inverters are making, see if I can show you what it's making here. Just bear with me, folks. The screen is not super awesome right now, but these inverters are making Seventeen fifty-eight. You can barely read that on the screen, but the inverters are ten years old. These are SMA inverters, which makes me feel really good about SMA. SMA inverters withstanding the test of time from July of twenty ten. So it's been eleven years, and these guys are still chugging along. Uh, the electrical uh, part here. This looks pretty good. Um, PVC. Eh. I don't love it, but it's still holding too. So all in all, this is a pretty good installation. And if if the workmanship is right, uh, if it's not obvious to you why longevity is so important with a PV system, think about it like it's kind of like buying a car. You know, these things are roughly thirty thousand dollars. This might have been forty or fifty ten years ago in 2010, and um, you want it to last. You want it to make the power that it's supposed to make. These are supposed to make power for 25 years. The panels are supposed to last 25 years. You obviously want the mount to last 25 years. And you really want the inverter to last at least 10 years if that's the warranty. You don't want to replace an inverter every five years. Um, the inverters on this system are probably, probably $1,200 each if I were to replace them at least. And then maybe another $1,200 in labor. So in order to get the ROI out of this system and get it to really pay for itself, everything needs to last, uh, as everything needs to last 25 years or, or the, the more stuff that breaks, the quicker it's uh, not paying for itself. So all in all, this is a pretty good installation. Um, I'm not just out here shaking my head. And um, you know, if this guy's work is holding 11 years later, if it's holding on this good, then I feel pretty good about the ground mounts that we're doing out there. The way that uh, I, you learn, unfortunately, sometimes is by taking apart stuff that's failed and, and you know learning off the older stuff. And that's how we humans have to learn about everything, including solar. So these uh, ground mount PV systems continue to show that they do have some longevity and they sure look a whole lot better than the ones on the roof. Guys, if you're looking for solar installation, 
design, consulting, uh, material sales. We'd love to sell you a Solark or a, a, a Arc Lithium battery. I'd love to come out there and help you troubleshoot your system. I talk with folks all over the country, um, do troubleshooting and consulting and helping people out. And I also do the full installs pretty much all over the Southeast. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Johnny Valentine with Gain Solar, signing out.